This is the award-winning Action News with John Wilson and Cheryl Brown, Dick Fletcher with the weather, and Ken Brew with sports. Good evening, I'm John Wilson. And I'm Cheryl Brown. And the news tonight is what's shaping up to be one of the most ferocious storms to hit the east of New England in more than 40 years. The storm is pounding New York City tonight in Philadelphia after dumping more than a foot and a half of snow on Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C., paralyzing the nation's capital. 350,000 government workers, all but essential personnel, were sent home by noon. Churches have been asked to shelter those stranded and unable to get home. 30,000 Virginia and West Virginia homes are reported without power. Airports from Bristol and Richmond, Virginia to New York City are closed tonight. And Cheryl, until tonight, the winter of 83 had been a mild one, but it all changed. It changed indeed, didn't it, John? Our warmer than average winter did, though, however, cut the demand for energy, and that helped drive down the inflation rate. Wholesale prices were down 1% in January, the sharpest one-month drop on record. Leading the way were big drops in the cost of natural gas and home heating oil. Shoppers also saw a change at the supermarket. The price of eggs is down 13%. Apples down almost 7%. Chicken and lettuce both down 2.5%. And ground beef is down 1%. And the price of gasoline, which had been going through the roof, has taken a nosedive. Your regular was about 129. But now we're charging 93 cents for, for regular. In the Bay Area, regular gasoline is selling for under a dollar. The lowest we've seen, 96.9 .9 cents a gallon for regular. Inflation touches everything, including our leisure time. Tonight in St. Petersburg, thousands of people crowded the city's Bayfront Center for a rock concert. Action News arts reporter Greg Whalen paid a visit to the Bayfront and has a report on how bad times are altering our cultural diet. They are mostly very young, and Tom Petty's their man. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Shirts and jerseys! Yes. Proof, the city of the senior set is not too old to rock and roll. Obviously has several college campuses and high school campuses in the St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. We do very well with them. Very well indeed. At 1250 a customer, a sellout arena crowd means a box office of a million dollars for the Bayfront. Another night, another show, a different kind of crowd. In the arena, Bette Midler. In the auditorium, a generation apart, Mitzi Gaynor. A crowd like this really speaks for itself. When you have the right combination of entertainers on the right night, at the right time of year, you can really pack them in. But as long as it's Tom you're waiting on, as long as it's Mitzi or Barry or this man you want to hear, you're fine. There's a lot of cultural uh, things to do down here, and we love it. Culture for others means opera, drama, the more serious stuff. But on the Sun Coast, it doesn't sell. For instance, something like Children of a Lesser God or Mornings at Seven uh, did not sell as well as perhaps a Mitzi Gaynor or Carol Channing in Hello, Dolly. So keep looking for Tom Petty living up with Mitzi Gaynor. It's not opera, but it's where the profit is for the performers, the promoters, and the city of St. Petersburg. Greg Wayland, Action News. Music turned sour on the roads. Independent truckers in the Bay Area wanted to do what that snowstorm up north is doing, stop shipments and disrupt commerce. They failed. Today, the Florida Independent Truckers Association called off the strike in Florida and asked drivers to go back to work. Last night, truckers here were waiting on word from the national headquarters that the strike was over. When the word came today, they started up their 18-wheelers and hit the road again. Well, the end of the strike is certainly good news for Al Martucci. He's one of the independent truckers I profiled last week. He and the bank own three trucks, and he needs to run to keep from going under. Tonight, Al was going over his books, trying to stretch what little money he has left. Two days ago, he borrowed $5,000. Already, most of it's gone, paying old bills. There was $1,600 in truck payments. $1,600 for gasoline, $700 for license plates. The list goes on and on. The strike really hurt him. When you look at it, do you think you want anything? Oh, I think so. We've got more than we had in 79. Uh, at least we have a written confirmation this time, whereas we had a verbal confirmation in 79. It's a start. Anyway, we're going in the right direction. Al's wife, Sue, shares his optimism. She thinks the Congress will listen to their plight and make things better. But she's glad the strike is over because things really got tight. You emptied your son's piggy bank? 
Yeah. Yeah, we did. We're guilty. <laughs> No paying back, but I'm guilty. That we sat one night, and um, his birthday came up, and we just, you know, and we're gonna make ends meet and give him half a decent party. We wanted to to do something for him, and unfortunately, he paid for it. <laughs> Al told me that while he thinks the strike was successful, the truckers do want more than just an investigation. They want concrete results, and if they don't get those results, he says, they can and will strike again. Trucks bring our food and our clothing. A well-organized strike could really hit hard. If they can really organize it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Still to come on Action News tonight, replacements soon to be named for those suspended Hillsborough County commissioners. And the Israeli defense minister resigns, but he is not gone yet. overseas tonight is the resignation of Israel's defense minister Ariel Sharon but Sharon was acting more like a winner and not like a man who had just resigned at a speech today he was smiling as if he expected to get another job almost as good one cabinet member agrees if he so wishes he can and I'm sure the government will accept him gladly on Sunday, the cabinet will formally accept Sharon's resignation. Prime Minister Menachem Begin is expected to support Moshe Ahrens, the ambassador to the United States, as Sharon's replacement. And what does the change in command mean to U.S.-Israeli relations? Well, the Reagan administration tonight says it will boost support for the president's Mideast peace plan. But government officials in Israel say there will be little change. Mr. Sharon really did not represent himself as an individual for his personal interests. He represented the policy of Mr. Begin. Ariel Sharon may be the loudest critic of U.S. policy in the Mideast, but his views are shared by just about every member of Mr. Begin's cabinet. An armed robbery suspect led Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputies on a high-speed car chase tonight. Details are sketchy, but police say five deputies have been injured in the chase. The suspect was first spotted on Highway 301 in South Hillsborough County. The wild, chase, uh, the wild chase, which included a helicopter, finally ended at a roadblock just south of the Pasco County line. We now understand that that suspect is dead, that he shot himself at the scene. John? There is new information tonight on the commissioner scandal that rocked Hillsborough County. Governor Graham says he'll find replacements for suspended commissioners Jerry Bomer, Joe Cutfuss, and Fred Anderson within 10 days. The governor says his office has been flooded with applications from people wanting a seat on the county commission. The three commissioners were suspended by Graham last week after being charged with bribery and extortion. A scandal of another kind has rocked Tampa Bay's medical community. A federal jury in Tampa has convicted Optus Center and its former officials of Medicare fraud. Optus Center is a Georgia-based eyewear firm which had offices in eight Bay Area Montgomery Ward stores. Its former owner was convicted on 40 counts of Medicare fraud. He and a partner were accused of billing Medicare for eyeglasses not needed by their patients. Montgomery Wards was not charged. A recent hospital visit turned into a nightmare for a local family when unexpected bills started coming in. The family thought they were covered under a special federal program. Yet that requires hospitals to give a certain amount of free care in return for government funds. The problem was interpretation, and as usual, when Action Line reporter Mike Deason steps in, the matter is cleared up quickly. That's right. Dawn Hagen needed medical treatment, but both she and her husband were unemployed, yeah. and they hardly had enough money to feed their seven children. She was told there might be some charitable money available if she went to the emergency room at Morton Plant Hospital in Largo. When Dawn came here to the emergency room, she says she told the staff she had no money and couldn't sign any form saying she'd be responsible for her financial obligations. And then she asked if there was any charitable money available so she could receive treatment. Although she was told the money was available by the staff at the emergency room where she was treated as an outpatient, the hospital policy only allows the funds to be given to inpatients, so she received bills. But we talked to administrator John Gray. And because of the need, they are unemployed and so forth, we went ahead and wrote off the amount as hospital charity. Many hospitals do give free service under a federal program called the Hill Burton Act. If your income is low and you need medical help, ask the hospital if the funds are available. Provide proof of your income, and you'll be notified in 48 hours if the funds are there. Gray says hospitals would really like to give out more free service. However, that situation is getting to the point where sometimes it gets a little bit unbearable because the free load gets very heavy. Mike Deason, Action News. 
Well, you should be glad, John, that you are on the Sun Coast tonight and not in Washington, D.C. Cheryl, some people never want to be in Washington, D.C. They want to stay on the Sun Coast. But look at this. It's the worst ever. Well, it could be at least in almost half a century. The full report coming up next with Nick Fletcher and the weather on Action News. Our weather is so tame compared to what they're getting in Washington. You know, I want to hear all about it. It's really nice to sit here. and I, Now, we're talking about the prospects. Not a real neat weekend here. Well, boy, it's sure going to beat the heck out of what they're going through up there. It's incredible. It's neat here right now. It temperature's 56 at Tampa International, 59 at the St. Pete Clearwater Airport. Do you know what the folks in Washington, D.C. would give to have temperatures like that? Or the people in Baltimore or Boston or New York City or Philadelphia or Pittsburgh? 54 degrees is our dew point, relative humidity 93%, steady barometer 3005, and a north wind at 9 miles an hour. Our high today was 72, low this morning 56, and we haven't had any rain at Tampa International. We did, though, see some clouds racing off and on across the sky, and by late afternoon, the thin high layer was out there. Sky 10 flies over the area, and we're likely to see the clouds with us tonight into tomorrow, and they may yield some rain. But that'll be a big change. We'll show you the, the past 18 hours or so from 6 o'clock this morning, satellite pictures, and watch what happens in the western Gulf of Mexico as the clouds begin to intensify. Now we take a look at the picture tonight, and you notice that they're getting a lot closer to us. While there's no storm at the surface with this, there is enough of an upper-level disturbance and obviously a lot of clouds to cause us some problems. Super radar, the composite of all the radars, will show us that there is some rain falling along the Texas coastal area. Half inch to three quarters of an inch in the Corpus Christi area is the greatest amount there. Will you see what paints in in the northeastern portion of the United States in this snowstorm? It has been a woolly one. Not only that, but the circulation around that storm center has caused winds gusting to 30 to 40 miles per hour along the coastal areas. That snow shield blankets the area from Boston southward all the way down to the North uh, Carolina border. Now, this, there are some thunder showers back in the area along the Texas coast. That's what we're watching, new storm system in the Pacific Northwest. Now we'll take you through three cities in the northeastern part of the United States. First off, Washington, D.C. Latest snowfall total I have is 23 inches at Dulles International Airport. 21 inches of snow on the ground in uh, uh, the Baltimore area and 18 inches of snow on the ground at Philadelphia. Skiing is probably a pretty good way to get around, maybe the only way to get around in that area for this weekend. This is Philadelphia where they were letting folks out of school early, ch uh, school children, and I mean mass transit was probably about the only thing that was moving. Not only that, imagine this, being on the Long Island Expressway at 5 o'clock tonight. Some of these people may not be home till the weekend's over. It's really stacking up, and that's in New York City. Well, forecast highs around the nation tomorrow in the northeastern part of the country will be very cold. Northern New England maximums only 10 to 20 above in the 20s from New York City and Boston westward through Detroit, in the 30s for Chicago and Minneapolis and into the Omaha vicinity, 40s in a narrow band, 50s in the southeast, the 60s in central Florida, 70s in southern Florida, 60s through central Texas, and the 70s in the desert southwest. Specific cities in their forecast highs for tomorrow would include 30 degrees in Detroit, 32 in Washington, 52 in Atlanta, 50 degrees in Memphis, 60 in Dallas, 66 degrees in Brownsville, 73 degrees in Phoenix, it should be pleasant there, 58 in Salt Lake City, 61 in San Francisco, 57 degrees in uh, Seattle, and only 19 for the high in Portland, Maine, and the snow will begin to get there tomorrow. Temperatures in Florida right now, under the cloud cover, beginning to increase, 49 degrees in Pensacola, 46 in Tallahassee, 55 in Cross City, 58 in Sarasota, 68 degrees in both Miami and Key West, the warmest in the area. Our marine forecast for the region calls for a northwest to north wind at 10 to 15 knots tonight. Winds will increase tomorrow. Seas tonight will run 3 to 5. Tomorrow they may pick up to 5 to 8 feet with the winds increasing. Gulf water temperature is 61 degrees. Four tides tomorrow. The first one's a high tide coming up a little more than an hour and a half at 12.49 uh, a.m. First low tide at 8.35. Sun up at 7.11. It'll probably come through a dull gray sky at that point because our forecast for tonight calls for mostly cloudy skies. Lows will range in the mid to upper 40s. Tomorrow, look for a good chance for rain throughout almost the entire day. Best chance will be tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Highs will generally be in the mid to upper 60s. We think that the rain will probably end early in the day on Sunday and allow us some clearing by late in the day. But if that happens, it'll turn cool and the high will only be around 60 or so in the Tampa St. Pete area. I didn't get a chance to mention it, but you've got to realize something. Snow that's falling at the rate of an inch an hour or two inches an hour, that's heavy, right? Allentown, Pennsylvania. 
five inches of snow per hour tonight. You could take a nap and wind up with the whole place five buried. Five inches an hour. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah, heavy I'm duty snow. Glad here. I don't have to shovel it. That's right. Bad news for the folks up north, of course, but potentially good news here because that will help the sagging tourist industry because of the mild winter so far. Coming up, sports, marvelous Marvin Hagler defends his crown and Ken Brew defends his next on Action Sports. All right, let's talk round ball on a Friday night. Hoopla. High, High school, school hoopla. High school. That's yeah. right, right to the grassroots. Yeah. The element of surprise. If there's one thing Action News has got going for it, it's the element of surprise. Never know where we're going to show up next. Why? In clear order tonight, they're saying, I can't believe it. A.N. has come to my school. Unbelievable. Gibbs against Clearwater tonight, and the big gun was, i tell you, Gibbs, this team in the dark jerseys were just all over the place. They came in, they needed a win, they were a 3-8 team battling a 4A power like Clearwater, and Gibbs walks away with the victory. Clearwater walked, worked the ball inside fairly decently. They were down by 10 with about three minutes to go. They battled back, but it wasn't enough. Gibbs, 74-69 tonight, an upset win at Clearwater. The other biggie in Pinellas was at Dunedin, and Bogey wins no sweat. In Hillsboro, the slug out in Jeff's gym, and Brandon stays up with the leader, Robinson. How marvelous is Marvin? Try 231 of the sixth. Hagler hangs on to the world middleweight crown with the TKO. Tonight's pug ugly was Tony Simpson. Hey, pound for pound, Hagler is the best, isn't he? Boxing tonight, Curtis uh, Hickson Hall. And watch this, right hand coming up from the guy in gold. Ooh, guy in gold is Michael Bradley with the right. He's ranked number 17 in the world. Here it is against slow mo. That's Excedrin hitting number three. But Tom Baker, the uh, punch E in that, stays on his feet, finishes the bout, takes a split decision from Bradley. It's Bradley's first loss in his career, and it happened tonight. And the question we address every Friday night. Where are those big ones chopping? One must procure his rod and reel and boogie on down to the Whedon Islands. You say, Ken, wasn't that a major battle in WWD2? Pacific Theater, wasn't it? No, no. These Whedon Islands are near shore acres. You'll see so many reds, you'll think Andropov is in town for the weekend. If you love wildlife and fishing around here, you've got a soulmate. The man's name is Alan Fredrickson, native Floridian, went to Gainesville. By trade, a commercial fisherman. Now, before you jump to conclusion, he's written a book. It's about Paradise Lost, the decline of fishing around here, and for that matter, the decline of fish. He's serious about it. I am going to dedicate and give all of my royalties from the hardcover sales of this book. That money will be used by the Clearwater Marine Science Department up there to reintroduce seagrasses and mangrove habitat in our area. If we can upgrade our habitat and re restore our marine grasses, you'll see an increase in the fin fish population. Fredrickson supports his art by fishing. He says he knows it'll never be like what it was in the 40s and 50s. He just wants to make it this close. How much were those doggies in the double? 43 bucks and change if and only if you had the 3-2 at the old Pelota Palace. 120-30 for the 3-1. So ends the week. We said goodbye to Sorcy. But before we say hasta lumbago to the big boats, a final send-off courtesy of our Bob Peterson.
And as the sun slowly sets in the west, we can tell you the Rowdies won tonight 7 to 5 over Fort Lauderdale. All right. Thank you, Ken. No. Developments. Developments coming in now. Well, coming up on Action News, we're going to have a live report by Craig Roberts on that high-speed chase that left one man dead and five deputies injured. That story coming up next on Action News. A man apparently wanted for armed robbery tried to outrun the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department tonight. It has ended in death and there have been some injuries. Let's get the story now live from Action Newsman Craig Roberts who's on the scene. Where are you, Craig? Well, John, we are just south of the Pasco County line and we have just arrived on the scene. From what we know, five Hillsborough County Sheriff deputies have been injured this evening. Two have been taken to local hospitals for treatment. One man is dead, as you said, from self-inflicted gunshot wounds. More on the story now from Captain Steve Appel with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Sir, what prompted this incident? tonight. Our deputies were stopping a vehicle that was suspected to have attempted an armed robbery of a uh, station at Gibsonton and uh, Highway 301. That's the cargo station That's store? Cargo station, yes sir. And a chase uh, ensued? A chase ensued. The suspect was uh, known to be armed with a uh, 45 automatic. Uh, the deputies chased the, uh, the subject north on 301. We uh, had two vehicles involved in an accident at uh, 60 and 301. And the chase ended up here where the suspect apparently uh, shot himself before the deputies could approach his car. Captain Appel, thank you very much. That is the latest right up to the minute, John, on this story. One man is dead from self-inflicted gunshot wounds. Five Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputies are wounded. Thank you very much, Craig. That's this edition of Action News. We want to thank you for joining us. Nightline, of course, coming up next. And remember, if you see news happening, be sure to call our Action News line. It's 577-NEWS. Thanks for Cheryl Brown, Dick Fletcher, and Ken Brew. I'm John Wilson. Have a good weekend. Thank you, and good night.